Right now, we're going to LandryFootball.com. It's Chris Landry. We talk a lot of scouting. We talk a lot of Crimson Tide football. Hey, Chris, I hope you've had a great week, sir. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I'm having a good week. Just uh, put it on the Golf Channel, trying to trying to watch the girls. Uh, I'm sure you've talked about it. I don't know if you have, but the uh, Alabama girls are playing for the national title today. And um curious to see how things are going. You, you have an update. I just put it on. I, it, it just started, I believe. Huh? Yeah, it started about an hour ago, yeah. and uh, Alabama's a little bit behind. They're going to have to make up some of the uh, the strokes here as they kind of finish up. But uh, uh, it lo- looks like we, we've got a chance. We'll see. We'll see exactly. I, I don't follow a lot of golf, but I have been trying to keep up with the Crimson Tide uh, de- in and out of the segments here. Yeah, well, you obviously got a great golf program there, both the women. So, so it's kind of still kind of early, though. The thing about match play, that thing uh, could change change in a hurry. So it'll be it'll be an interesting afternoon for folks that are close to the TV and catch it on the golf channel. All right, so we're a hundred days, ninety nine days away mm-hmm. from the regular season of college football. We are about a hundred and one days away from Alabama Crimson Tide football. What's going through these coaches as they prepare and they look back and self scout? What what's what do they do this time of the year? Recruiting uh, a lot of focus on recruiting and. Kind of is reflected of what we do on LandryFootball.com is we we a lot of the news the news cycle is recruiting and um, you know getting guys um, focusing on that and putting an emphasis on it because this is the time of the year where you want your players your current players to kind of take some time off um, you've been through spring um, you know you know be smart you know where we expect you weight wise and get condition wise. Uh, but t- get some time away from football a little bit so that when you come back in, you're fresh mentally and ready to go. From a coaching staff standpoint, it is a lot about recruiting. And what time is not put on recruiting, it's put on uh, your fall practice schedule on uh, and kind of mapping that out of how you want to do it. Now, you adjust it as you get closer and as you get to practice based upon, you know, weather and injuries and whatnot. But you have a plan of what you want to work on. Um, and then obviously as a staff, you continue to fine tune, um, you know, everything that you're doing in your scheme. So in this case with, you know, new coordinators, you're looking at things and making sure that everybody's on the same page, but it's a lot of recruiting right now. That's the real focus around the country. When we talk about next week in Destin, and we're going to be covering the SEC spring meetings, I can only imagine what it's like with all those football head coaches. I mean, we got 14 alpha dogs in a room trying to agree on one thing I, I just something tells me that would be I'd love to be a fly on the wall and, and and just listen to these all these guys debate these different issues well I think that um it is it is very interesting I've been in the part of a few of them and um uh, you know my time's always been kind of you, you know it's it's a lot like well, I, I should say, because I've never been a part of this, but I would think it's a lot like, like somebody was asking about the owners' meetings in the NFL, and I said it's a lot like, you know, Senate and Congress, although I've never been involved in either one, where you kind of you talk amongst each other and you try to see, uh, you try to partner up on ideas and try to set forth an agenda and you, you go forward with some support, and I think that's a lot of that's done. You, you have some of the coaches that um, – some of them are closer to, to one another um, th- than others. And, and you kind of go through on – and you, you kind of have a feel for how people stand on different issues and different topics. And then I think you go forward with it, and you have some healthy discussion at times. But for the most part, you kind of pretty much know where you want to you know, put forth your agenda and your plan. Uh, and it can be real interesting. And they're definitely – if you're at, you know, Alabama versus at South Carolina versus Kentucky or Vanderbilt, you you see things differently because it's different programs and they're different they're different hurdles and obstacles that one has that another doesn't have. So a problem that one will have another doesn't have, but you know, they may have different problems that you don't have. So um it is always a challenge and of course we lost Mike Slive and you know we talked about that let talk about him last week that he he the best commissioners are the guys that can kind of smooth the room over and kind of bring everybody together for the good of good of all and get everybody to see that if we do it this way, this is going to benefit us all in the long run, even in the short run. You know, it may not be exactly what you want or you want. It's going to make it better in the long run, and here's how. And that's, that's what good, quite frankly, politicians do. 
Well, Nick Saban talked about it last week that he's trying to prevent free agency in the SEC, that that's the goal. Uh, I know yeah. you had an update with Brandon Kennedy there on your website. Nick Saban's putting his feet down and saying, I'm not going to release him inside this conference to Auburn or Tennessee. Well, I think that that is, to me, a problem that we have in college football that we all need to get our hands around. Um, look, we, we – Kids that graduate, they want to go somewhere else, um, that's that's fine. Um, but I think there needs to be some restrictions. People will say, well, coaches can move anytime they want a player ship. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think there's a difference. If you don't understand that, you know, we, we tend to, and I know we, we people laugh and scoff at student athletes and all that. And I know it's big-time business. Okay, This is amateur athletics. And, you know, the reality is a lot of these guys are going to play pro ball. Most of them won't, even at the highest level. Um, I believe it's the responsibility of the adults to make sure that we protect the youngsters from you know, deciding that they're going to leave at every whim. I, I think we've created an environment in society, and particularly in sports, where kids feel entitled. Uh, they're recruited. They're told, they're told everything in the world about how great they are. They come in, and they feel like they've been offered something and they're entitled to something when all they're entitled to is an opportunity. And if somebody outperforms them or is just better, which is eminently possible, they're not going to start. The other person will. Well, you know, and it used to be in the old days, and I don't want to sound like the get-off-my-lawn old man here, but it used to be just, Lifted up your bridges, you went to work, and you tried to get better. Now it's, well, I didn't get my chance. I was, I was the guy, and now I'm the, this guy's the guy. I'm going somewhere else where I can be the guy. Well, you know, I, you know, I guess there's nothing inherently wrong with it. To me, it just sticks in my craw. Um, I, I just would wish there was a little bit more of a commitment to stick with it. In most cases, players would be better off sticking it out. But it's their right, and certainly as long as the rules allow it, you know, that's the issue. Now, in terms of transferring within the conference, it's an interesting dichotomy because, you know, a coach can leave, I know, and a coach can leave uh, a school, a coach can leave Kentucky and go to Alabama as a coach if he wants to or anywhere else. A player can't. Should they be allowed the same uh, rules? Personally, I think it's different. Other people say they should have the right to do what they want. Uh, I do believe if you graduate, you have a little bit more of a right to move on than if you're just an undergraduate transfer. I think that transferring within the conference could be unhealthy, and here's why. Here's the unintended consequences. Some people will tell you, oh, they have a right to do what they want. You can move whatever you want. Well, here's what happens. You create an environment, and I think this is all around the country, but particularly within the conference, we'll stick there, where you begin to start recruiting off of players' squads. So you see, now it goes from, well, a kid wants to leave to go to school A to school B. Now it doesn't end there. Now it becomes you're getting in there and you begin to recruit these kids off of other, other squads, and you're saying, you know, you're not getting a fair shot over there. You're better than anybody we got here. You come here, we could do this for you. And, and to me, that is dirty pool and Behind, you know, not the way it's supposed to be done. That's my personal belief, and I think we're getting more and more of that. So that's the unintended consequences of, you know, having this environment. That I mean, I don't know if you heard about what happened with Oregon State. Oregon State had to they had to put sanctions on themselves. They sent out a letter to kids, you no know, Hawaii's program, inviting them to come to their spring day. Not Hawaii recruits kids on Hawaii's team. Why? Yeah, I saw that. It's crazy. Okay, I mean, do, and again, I guess if you've not worked in the business, you're on the outside in saying, well, what's wrong with the kid if he wants to leave and go somewhere else? Well, there's nothing wrong with it inherently if if the kid truly, if the kid's from Georgia and he's playing at Alabama and he truly wants to go home and he's got a chance to go back home, maybe his parents, one of his parents is sick with I think those are fine, but that's not what's happening in most cases. It's it's college free agency. Was that what, what we want? It's not what I think is the spirit of college football, 
So I don't. I think if we don't watch it, I think those of us that have been in the business, we see the underbelly of what is going to be the next step if we allow this and we don't put our foot down. And I think that's what's going on right now. And I think there's a lot of that now. Others will kind of like that because if you're sitting at a program that you don't recruit as well, you can go and say, hey, I can sit there and sit on the porch of an Alabama or a Georgia or whatever, and those kids are, you know, a lot of good players there. They're not going to all play, and boom, you know, I, I, you know, I miss on some recruits. I'll go and get those guys and get those guys to come in. Again, I, I, don't, I don't think that is uh, the spirit of the, of the way college athletics should be run, but I certainly understand the, the, the freedom of the right of a kid being able to leave, which is why I think it should be situational. Um, and uh, I don't think it should be allowable for a kid just to pick up and leave. We are talking right now to Chris Landry, LandryFootball.com. Chris, let's go back here to some maybe some fundamentals on Alabama. A question that we have thrown around all week here on the game is could Alabama go undefeated with either quarterback, Tua Tungavailoa and Jalen Hurts? You have been quoted on this program as saying that Alabama could play mediocre football and make it through. Can they play with either quarterback and make it through? Yeah, and probably didn't state that as well as I should have. I think I would say this. Let me amend it by saying they can play less than their best and still beat most teams. Um, I, you know, Certainly if they played mediocre against the wrong team on the wrong day, yeah, something bad could happen. But I think either quarterback could lead this team to an unbeaten record. Now, that's saying it in May when you don't know about an injury that could happen in late September or October. So, um, you know, I thought that Alabama was better than Auburn last year, but going into that game, um, that was a little that, – that was a bigger challenge for Alabama going into that game than, than I even thought talking to you in September. You know, so things can change. But I do think that either quarterback could – this Alabama team could go unbeaten on their schedule. Now, I could, I could say that either quarterback could lose that game, too. And, and um, I just don't see them you – know, I see it as unlikely, and I think that they're good enough as a team that both quarterbacks, um, either one, could go unbeaten. Now, could either quarterback win the SEC championship game and win two playoff games? That's the question. And that's the the one that I'm not sure that I can answer. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I would because at this point we don't know who would be in the playoffs. We can speculate. I, I would say, and I could be wrong on this projection, but I do think Georgia's, in my mind, a clear favorite in the East. I would say that they may need, depending on circumstances, may need, may need, they may need a better passing game um, to beat Georgia in the SEC championship game. I would say that right now. Than, than maybe they've had, say, most of last year. So I think while either quarterback could do it, I think it's important to kind of define the roles and see how this, this team develops, particularly the passing game develops through the course of the year, and not to overlook – let me get a nasty you know, message if I don't – if, if they don't, if they don't get, you know, if they don't play their best, they might be able to win some games. But that's not the mission. The mission is to get better steadily so that by the end of the year, they're a championship-caliber team. That's how they've won so many titles because they haven't always been what you'd call at their best in every game in September or October. It may be impressive wins here or there, but they may not have been their best. Most of their best has been towards the end of the year where they've been very difficult to beat. And there have been other times where they've kind of staggered in with injuries and kind of righted themselves and got enough guys healthy to make a run and finish it off like last year. I think we all thought that they might fall short, Alabama, that is, with all the injuries. They were able to get healthy enough and obviously had the great second half against Georgia to pull it off. You had a post and a YouTube post a couple of days ago on LandryFootball.com, and you say, do coaching motivational tactics work? Now, that's a free article. If you want to get a little bit of taste of the analysis that Chris Landry is able to provide at LandryFootball.com. But we use a lot of those here in Tuscaloosa. The bulletin board's generally full because a lot of people, you know, they make comments about Alabama, Nick Saban, they're tired of those guys winning, and, you know, sometimes they slip up and they say things, and it's used against them. Even if they don't say things, Nick Saban 
finds a way to twist those words and use a little bulletin board material here in Tuscaloosa. Do other coaches use it? And does yeah, it work? I think, I think the thing that's always a challenge as a coach is, are your players listening? You know, it's like any teacher. If you, if you do things the same way all the time, meaning, you know, the method could be the same, but the message sometimes has to be spiced up a little bit. It has to be something that, that gets a player's attention uh, that, that, because they tend to turn their way out. Now, now, here's a little tip. When you win, it's tougher to coach. Let me explain. When you win, players got all the answers. They can't do any wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when we win, we're better. They, they, they got all the answers. They know it all then. When you lose, they turn in and they're looking to you for answers because you didn't get it done. What did we do wrong? It, it, they're, they're all ears then. And so it's why a lot of times, and I think you can see this, some of this in Saban, when they lose, and I know it's rare, but go back and think of the times they've lose. He'll say things like, we didn't do this, we didn't do that. But and, and go back and look at them on the sidelines. Go back and look at them in situations. When they're struggling, what is Nick Saban doing? He's clapping his hand. He's lifting them up. Hey, still in the game. This is what you got to do. The worst time to get down on your team is when they're down. Because they're down, they get down further. Now, when things are going well and you're confident and you're, you know, you're peacocking out there and you're winning by four touchdowns and you're not doing your job and you're developing bad habits, what happens then? He goes off like a, you know, you know what. Um, that's, that's when you've got to challenge your guys to stay focused and get better. So, but there sometimes there are things you can do, and, and I the the post was on something that I was asked. The Cardinals have a new coach, Steve Wilkes. He put a hurdle in the locker room that represents, you know, he's a new coach. There are going to be a lot of hurdles this year, a lot of things that you have to overcome. Understand that that life's about hurdles. Getting over this hurdle and the next one and the next one. Bill Belichick once put an anchor in the locker room um, that symbolized. Don't be the anchor. Okay, don't be the guy that just takes off a little bit early in film session. That just maybe takes the half of that last period off. Because you then are going to be the anchor to this team. Um, Parcells was famous for he'd go with a veteran and he'd get one of those empty gas cans and he'd put it in the locker room and he'd say, uh, you got any gas left in that tank line? You know, he, you know I, I remember one time he did this to uh, Lawrence Taylor. Lawrence Taylor, Hall of Fame player, could not. He had never had success against Irv Pankey, a tackle for the Rams. So one year, they're getting ready to play the Rams, and Parcells leaves a plane ticket in Lawrence Taylor's locker room. And he says, yeah, it, it, and it's to New Orleans. And then there's a return flight, and there's a note that says, since we're playing Irv Panky this week and you can't get by him, you fly to New Orleans and you get Pat Swilling to fly up here since I know he can get by him. And, you know, that just irked Lawrence Taylor so much, and he had a, I think he had a four or five sack game that day. But it's little things like that that you think that doesn't take place at the pro level. Oh, it does. It's little things individually to get a, to get under a guy's craw. You got to know a guy. Some guys need to you put an arm need to put an arm around them. Other guys you need to stick your foot up put up their rear end and and make sure that they understand what's supposed to be done and how it's supposed to be done. So I do think the whole halftime speech stuff is very overrated. You don't have enough time, and it's more about focused on what you need to do. But during the week and the night before the game. Friday nights for college and Saturday nights for the NFL. That's where the biggest message is given. Before they break and go to bed, it's the message you give them to sleep on of maybe something that is going to get them extra focused on what their job is on hand this week. Chris, I want to switch and go to the NFL just for a couple of minutes. Um, you, you have any thoughts about a lot of these players not going to OTAs like Julio Jones and I mean they make a big story and I don't know if it's a big story or not maybe it's just because it's the month of May uh, and, and we're looking for something to talk about but I hear a lot of people talking about Julio Jones not showing up at OTAs there in Atlanta 
Yeah, and Tom Brady. There's others. Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, when they're voluntary, uh, we've learned, and I've learned, although I am old school and I want everybody there at all times, uh, voluntary is voluntary, and they don't come. And they say, well, you know, it's collectively bargained, so... You know, when it's mandatory, they're there, They find, and they're fine if they're not. And if it's voluntary, they have a right to not be there. Um, so you, you kind of learn to accept that that's just the way it's going to be. Now, me being kind of the old school guy, l- let me say this. When people say it doesn't matter, well, it does matter. Okay. Well, Tom Brady doesn't need to be at OTAs. He already knows. He's, he knows the system. What does he need to be there? Uh, it's nothing to do with Tom Brady. It's nothing to do with Julio Jones. Everybody's affected on that team. That every rookie, everybody that's participating in the OTAs is going to be better for Julio Jones and Tom Brady and everybody else's presence. Everybody's got a whole lot of hold ups. So it, it benefits and it, it raises the, the culture and, and the tone of those OTAs when they're there because. It's, it makes it a heightened importance, but also the ability to perform with your teammates, the cadence, the chemistry, all those things just don't happen at the snap of a finger. And you've got a different looking roster every year, even though Julio Jones and Tom Brady have been with their same team. All the other guys haven't. So it's important, but you can't make them go because it's not mandatory. Um, this is the player's way because this is the ultimate business. It's the player's way of kind of saying, you know, I'm not happy with my contract. So to in, in, in Tom Brady's case, I don't know, making a statement or whatever. In Julio Jones's case, he's making a statement that he, he wants a new deal. And that's, that's what it's all about. And that message is portrayed through his agent. And listen, that's just how the game is played. Uh, like it or not, that's pro football versus amateur football and that's the difference it's a business and taking care of that end of it is it dictates a lot of these moves and you know listen do i like it no i'm i'm old school i want everybody there but i also understand that you know they're going to want the best deal and the newest deal and that that uh, again that dictates these moves Chris, take it just a couple of minutes and, and talk about landryfootball.com because it's an amazing website and we didn't even have time to work our way maybe we'll do this next week because i want to spend some time hitting on these SEC teams because yeah. you have a complete evaluation of Tennessee. And I know we're always got these Bama blinders on and we focus on just Alabama, but you've got a scout breakdown of Tennessee heading into the 2018 season, a lot more there. Yeah, we've broken down, just to give you an idea, we mix them up a little bit. So we've got Kentucky, we got Arkansas, we've got Tennessee, uh, and, and we, obviously we're going to have everybody when it's done. We've got University of Minnesota, Baylor, so – uh, on on so on and so forth, and it's full roster breakdowns, depth chart projections, uh, recruiting classes of the past five years. Um, you know how how their team looks, uh, where the program is, uh, the personnel evaluations. Uh, that's what we do. That's that's what we do in breaking down the film for the spring, looking at the film grade notes from last fall that 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 have gone through, and then in basically breaking down all of these rosters. Do that in college. Do that in the NFL. That's what this time is for leading up to the season so that when we get to the season, then obviously you have a really good handle on these teams. And it's not about, do you think Louisville's going to win seven games or nine games? Or, that, that, that's all relative to other factors. It's this is what the team looks like. Here's where their strengths are. Here's what they're looking to do, so on and so forth. So that's what we do uh, at the college and NFL level. If you like football, You'll love LandryFootball.com. It's like having your own personnel department, your own scouting department, coaching department at your own uh, dispo- dispersal. Um, you know, it, it's it's to me, it's a fun time of year because it allows me time to really prepare and study these teams. So when the, when Toe meets Leather, then we're ready to go and we're ready to respond to what's happening on the field. And then our daily notebooks, as I said, in college, our notebooks every day are chock full of whether it's transfer information, which a lot of that's going on, but recruiting information, you get an early feel for as you know, Alabama when they get a commitment. Tell you a little bit about those guys, and it may be 2019 class, but uh, exactly how they fit in and what their skill set is, and how they they match up nationally. Um, we'll give you that. Uh, it may be some nuggets off of film grades of players that are on the team 
that maybe maybe that were recruits of the 18 class. Hey, this guy might be a more of an impact that you might have thought, or less of an impact, or whatever the case may be. Or it may be about a guy's projection to the NFL level. All those things we cover from a coaching and scouting perspective. So check us out at LandryFootball.com. Use the coupon code SUMMER. We've got a 50% discount off of any package. And if you get the year subscription right now, you get the football season for free. It's half price. So use the coupon code SUMMER, S-U-M-M-E-R. You can follow us on Twitter at LandryFootball. LandryFootball.com. It's an amazing website. He's got a, he's got an update right now. We didn't have a chance to get into it today, uh, but we'll get into it next week. Louisville football heading into the 2018 season. Alabama going to be taking on those guys down in Orlando coming up in 101 days. Chris, I appreciate you. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll talk to you next Wednesday. You bet. You bet. Thanks a bunch. Take care.